Hey, I'm Courtney Waterman, your tutor. Lover of anime, manga, and math. And you just tuned into another session of Tutor Me Senpai. Welcome back, everyone. Today we're jumping into an 11th grade topic, adding complex numbers. Now, if you're new to my channel, I'll be putting time codes in for this video in the description box below. So use it to skip ahead to whatever part of the video you think is most interesting. As always, if you have any questions about what we see today or even on homework, you can always put it in the comment box below or visit my Facebook page at Tunumi Senpai and tell me all about it there. At the end of this video, I'll be linking my 11th grade playlist in which I cover a lot more topics. So if you're interested in that, make sure you stay tuned. This video is going to have three parts, so leave a like, smash subscribe, and let's get started. In my previous videos, we've already talked about imaginary numbers and complex numbers. And if you haven't seen that video or you need a refresher, check out those videos. You can find them both right up here. But today we're going to be moving on and figuring out how to add our complex numbers. Now, adding our complex numbers will be rather simple. There's one main thing you need to know, and that's how to group like terms. Now, this is going to be similar to how you would add polynomials. So if you can do that, you should be able to do this. So let's jump into this example here. Here we have two complex numbers and we want to add both of them. We have three plus seven I and we have eight plus six I. Now, once again, the main thing you want to do here is to group like terms. What do we mean by grouping like terms when we have complex numbers? Well, your complex number is made up of two different components. You have your real component and your imaginary component. So when you're grouping like terms, you're gonna be grouping your reals together and then you're gonna group your imaginaries together and you'll add them separately. So the first thing you wanna do for this example is to drop our parentheses. We're adding this so there's nothing that we need to do specifically for it. So we can simply drop the parentheses. And when we do that, we're left with our three plus seven I plus eight plus six I. Now, your reals together with your reals and your imaginaries together with your imaginaries. So we can rewrite this as three plus eight plus seven I plus six I. Now, when you add your three plus eight, you're gonna get your 11. And when you add your seven I plus your six I, you're going to get 13 I. And then you're gonna add both of those together. So the resulting complex number is going to be 11 plus 13i. And all we had to do was to group your like terms, group your reals, then group your imaginaries. And the same thing is gonna work for subtracting two complex numbers. Here we have 17 plus 5i, and we're gonna subtract four plus 8i. So the first thing we wanna do is drop our parentheses. However, in this case, we can't simply drop them because we have this negative here. We want to distribute that negative before we can drop our parentheses. So in order to do that, we have to flip the signs of both of the components. So let's drop our parentheses on this side and flip these signs. So drop the parentheses here, flip the signs and drop the parentheses. So we're gonna have a minus four, minus eight I, we're going to distribute that negative. So we have minus four minus eight I, and then we group like terms like we did before. So we're gonna have 17 minus four plus five I minus eight I. Now, when you subtract these, you're gonna be left with what? Your 13. When you do these, you're gonna be left with a negative three I, and you're gonna add those. So you're gonna add this so the resulting thing is going to be a negative in between and you don't need to worry about the parentheses 13 minus 3i whenever you have your subtraction you just make sure you don't forget to distribute the negative both parts should be switch whatever the signs are you have to flip them if you have a negative in front before you can safely drop the parentheses other than that you're going to do the same thing you did when you were adding your complex numbers. So now that we've talked about how to add complex numbers, let's move on to constant multiples of complex numbers. So before we talk about constant multiples, let's first find out what does this simple example give us? I chose some really simple complex numbers so that we don't get confused with more complicated looking ones. So this is just gonna be one plus i and we're gonna add it to itself. So when we do that, once again, you're going to drop your parentheses because we're adding them. 
So that's going to be a 1. And of course, you can group them. So I'm going to do it at the same time. So it's 1 plus 1 plus i plus i. And that gives us 2 plus 2i. Two but what would happen if we added one more 1 plus i? So let's say instead of adding it two times, we had a 1 plus i plus 1 plus i plus 1 plus i. Now we would have 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus i plus i plus i, which would give us 3 plus 3i. But do you notice anything special about this? Well, both of these have 2s and both of these have 3s. What if we were to factor out that common number there? So 2 here, what would be left? Well, 2 times what would give us 2? Well, 1. And then 2 times what would give us an i? Well, an i, and we have that plus there. So 2 plus 2i, factoring out the 2, we get 2 times 1 plus i. And we had added 2 copies of 1 plus i. How about this one? We have 3 plus 3i. If we were to factor out that 3, what's left over? 1 plus i again, right? And notice we had 3 copies of 1 plus i. That lets us know that if we have constant multiples, all we have to do instead of doing all of this is distribute our constant to each component, both our real and imaginary component. As long as you do that, you don't necessarily have to break it all out. And you saw a little bit of that in our previous example where we had to distribute our negative. Remember, if you have a negative, let's say negative 8i uh, here, 4 plus 8i, you distribute this to both of your components. You're doing the same thing. You're multiplying both of these by negative 1. So as long as you have a constant outside of your complex number, don't worry about expanding it. You can simply distribute that constant to both components. So now that we have constant multiples under our belt, let's move on to our last part of the video. One big example to put everything together to make sure we understand how to do it all. So in our last example for today, we have 2 plus 3i minus 5 minus 11i plus 3 times negative 4 minus 4i. So remember, we want to try to remove our parentheses, but there's a few things we have to do first. In this case, we need to distribute our negative. In this case, we need to distribute our 3. So well, let's drop the parentheses here because that's the one thing that we don't have to worry about. We have a 2 plus 3i. Then we distribute the negative to both of these, which just negates our signs. So that's a negative 5 here and a positive 11i. Then we're going to distribute this 3 to both components, which gives us a plus 3 times a negative 4, a minus 12. And the same thing, a plus 3 to our negative 4 here gives us a minus 12i. Now we no longer have parentheses and we've distributed everything we need to distribute. Let's group our like terms. We have a 2 here. We have 5 here, or negative 5, and a negative 12 here. So that's 2 minus 5 minus 12. Then we have a 3i, positive 3i, positive 11i, and we have a negative 12i. So that's 3i plus 11i minus 12i. So what's 2 minus 5, or negative 3, minus 12 gives us a negative 15. And then 3i plus 11i gives us a 14i minus 12i gives us a positive 2i. So that's plus 2i. So all of this simplifies to a negative 15 plus 2i. Well, I hope you were able to follow along with today's video and I hope you now know how you can add your complex numbers. However, if you have any questions about what we saw today or if you want homework, you can always put in the comment box below or visit my Facebook page at Tumi Senpai and tell me all about it there. If you hadn't done so already, remember to leave that like. It surely helps our channel by letting YouTube know that you found a video helpful. And if you found a video helpful, so can someone else. So leave a like, hit the notification bell, smash the subscribe button, and share this video with a friend. 
Well, that's all the time I have for today. I really hope this helped with your homework. I'm looking forward to seeing you again next week. I'm Courtney. Here's your playlist. And this has been another session of Tutor Me Senpai.